Hi, Gareth. I guess the, the easiest question, the most difficult question at the start of a new campaign, what is the expectation from you on the squad? To win. Yeah, absolutely to win. I think we're, uh, that's what we're always about at this club. Uh, every competition that we go in for, we take really seriously and none more so than the WSL. How much did the, the frustration of missing out on Champions League last year and the manner in which you missed out form part of your sort of close season preparation, team talks, motivation for the girls? Or, or was that just put to bed as soon as the, the campaign was done? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it, it is what it is. I think it's really tough now to, because everyone's, you know, the competition's becoming so competitive. But for us, it's more about continuity with the squad that we have. Bringing in Jill obviously is a you know is a top player, but I think it's more about you know we don't want to have to qualify for Champions League, so we want to win the league. If you win the league, hopefully that's enough to get into the group stages outright. And we've seen how difficult it is in that qualification process, us personally and also other teams. So for us, it's about trying to miss that out as much as we can. And we know how tough it is to win the WSL because it's 22 games, uh, and like I say, the levels are improving all of the time but no the motivation for us is always there we don't really look too much at last season although we know that there were some real positive signs there it's one of the things to improve on from last campaign the start to have a better domestic start well I don't think it really of course you want a good start there's no doubt about that and there are no easy starts so to speak I think we started with two away games last season due to obviously one of the games being cancelled so but I think if you look at Chelsea over the last three seasons, when they won the league, they've lost the first game on every occasion. So, you know, it's not about where you start, it's where you finish. And we've always made strong finishes, if you like. Um, certainly in my time here, we'd like to improve on our start for sure. But, you know, it's, a, it's not an overly long campaign when I've just mentioned that we only play 22 games. But I think uh, hopefully with, like I say, the continuity of the squad we have, I think all of the signs are, are there for us to, to try and make a good start. It doesn't guarantee it, but we're, we'll see what happens. Finally, for me, just one thing away from the here and now slightly. I just wonder if you or any of the girls have reached out to Caroline Weir, one of your girls formerly of this parish, given the nasty injury she suffered in the last week or so. Yeah, I mean, I was aware that she, she sustained an injury. I didn't realise the severity of it. It's a real shame for Caroline. You know, she had a really good season last year. Uh, she was a top player for, for myself and uh, a really good girl to work with. So, you know, we've, I'm sure the girls would have reached out. I have, you know, I've had text conversation with her. So um, hopefully she's, uh, she's okay. It's a long road. We've seen that. We've seen that this injury now, unfortunately, is, is kind of quite common in, in the women's game. Um, so I think it's, uh, it's difficult. It's a difficult moment for her, but she'll come back stronger, I'm sure. Yeah, I think uh, there's a few little knocks and bumps. I think it's always difficult when you come back from uh, an international break, particularly right at the start of the season, and, and literally have a couple of days preparation for the game. It's not ideal, but you know we're we've been aware of that for a while, and it was the same scenario last season. So yeah, we've we pushed back training a little bit to allow us uh, some time. Everything was really professionally dealt with in that respect so that we could check in with players individually and uh, but the, the comms are pretty good between nations now because we have a lot of girls who are away you know we are 14 15 again in this camp uh, at various camps so getting that information and getting that necessary kind of detail from the nations and then obviously just constantly checking in with the girls as well you know because the demands on them are really high now you know there's no real breaks everyone I've spoken to has felt that it was a long international break so uh, yeah and like I say it just and we're no different because all the other teams would have suffered the same but I think it just disrupts that lack of pre-season time that you already have I think um, we spoke about that with the players is about kind of reforming and reconnecting as quickly as we possibly can because there's not much time Well, midfielders, depending on the type of midfielders, they have to be prepared to score. And, you know, there's no doubt that Jill's got that capability. She's, uh, like I've said previously, a top player. We're here to help her improve even more. She's settled in really well. Um, 
I think the group is testament to the group of girls that we have here that we have players who are able to just slot in straight away and adapt to life in Manchester and life at Man City. So I think it's a really good signing for us, one we're we're really pleased to to have, and we look forward to uh, to having Jill for the next two or three years and 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 taking us to new levels, hopefully. Great, if that's all the questions from the room, we will go to everyone remotely. Um, Emma Sanders, we'll start with you. Thank you. Hi, 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 Emma. Uh, I apologise for the branding, so I am actually in at local training ground, so I, I, I apologise. Um, <laughs> just, just kind of following on from what you were saying there about the, the international scheduling, um, yeah, we, we've heard quite a lot of players speak out about it, many guys said that you know, we, we can't really waste any more time in terms of getting that communication with the, uh, with the federations. Is that kind of a sentiment that, that you echo? Do you want that sorting out sort of ASAP? Well, it will it will be helpful. I mean, you have to look at individuals case by case. I think when you start to see these types of injuries that we're seeing a lot more of, it's so difficult to kind of pinpoint what what the causes are. It's just, and that's why we need more more detail, more more science around kind of why these types of things happen. But it's a, it's a worry and it's a concern, and and not just for those players who do sustain injuries, but certainly for players that you know are continually the demands on them are so high. I think when players went back on this international camp, certainly the Lionesses, there was, I think it was 33 days from the final. So, and then they're obviously not going to get much time off in that respect because they want to be working with their clubs and their new teammates, etc. So it's so difficult. The demands are really high and we, we try to get the balance right as a club as much as we possibly can and I'm sure the other clubs do as well, but it's really, really difficult. I think uh, obviously the World Cup being pushed back as far as it was doesn't help. There was a hell of a long build up to it in terms of players being away with their nations. Um, and it's just a little bit lopsided at the moment in that respect. And I think it's really important that there's more evidence based detail that we can we can use to say, right, okay, we need to be really smart here with with players load because unfortunately at the moment everything kind of looks like it's heading towards the reason in why we're getting some of these really serious injuries. Yeah, can I just double check on, on the availability of the players? Obviously you were talking about um, sort of there being a few knocks. I think Tony Shaw was one that um, appears maybe have a bit of a knock on the international break. Can we do an update on her and is there anything else that's you know, missing? Yeah, there was a there was a couple of little niggles. That was all. Buddy was one of them. Didn't play in the second game, but um, that was a decision that was made quite quite late on. So you know she's she's with us now. She's she's been assessed over the last couple of days, and uh, yeah, we'll see how she is for Sunday. But I, I don't think it's anything too too dramatic in that sense. Um, outside of that, no, everyone was was pretty good in in good spirits and and pleased to be back. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. Uh, Dan Pentland. Hey, Gareth, hope you're well. Thank you. Hi, Dan. Um, just wanted to ask you on West Ham because, you know, obviously, you're going to go there as a really kind of settled team, and, you know, obviously, Rianne's quite clear to the party there, and, you know, obviously, I think she's trying to implement a different style of play as well. You know, is that going to kind of have any, any benefit to yourselves, do you think, going into this weekend? Oh, I'm not sure. I think, you know, continuity is. Is something that I've, I've 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 not really experienced in terms of a settled squad in the in the seasons that I've been here, and now finally we we're uh, we we've definitely got that in terms of this squad that we're we're with. But I think that's the circumstances around why that's happened. I think the women's game has changed dramatically in the last two or three years, where players now you're looking to secure the players who you want to keep at the club for, for a longer period than just probably one year or two years maximum. Two years was probably the longest contract you ever used to see in the in the women's game. So things are changing a lot and we have to adapt with it like all of the other clubs do. And I think uh, you never know when you make so many changes in the summer, you're just never really sure how that's going to play out. And you're hoping that players can hit the ground running pretty soon. But um, yeah, for us, I think, you know, um, it's been a different, different summer, different kind of um, 
some of the recruitment meetings we had were very clear in, in what our objectives are and, and the players we identified. And, and also, the biggest part about, about recruitment for me is, is retention of players that you really want to keep. And I think that's really key. And uh, yeah, like I say, there's a lot of change happening in the women's game as we, as we speak from minute to minute. And I think trying to create a settled group as much as you possibly can, I think that that's the way forward, the way to work. Obviously, last few seasons, I think it was, what, 56, 57, 58 points last year to win the title. So, you know, given all the investment elsewhere, you know, everybody wants to be competing this year. But, you know, do you think that you're still going to need to win, you know, 18, 19 games to, to win the title? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I don't see that change in that kind of 55, 56 point minimum. And like you say, there's no guarantees in that. Second place was 56 last season. I think, um, yeah, it's. Uh, I think the, the levels are improving for sure. And I think, you know, what, what we will, within that, when the levels do improve from other teams and other teams start to take points off one another, then the, the finishing total is always not as high because, you know, Teams probably drop more points than they've ever done previously, so it's a uh, it's a difficult one to gauge, really. I mean, for us, it's more about both ends of the box. It's going to be really important. We know that we arrive in in those situations many, many times. We've got quality players at the top end of the pitch. If we can keep things really clean at the other end of the pitch as well, then that gives us more opportunity to get those necessary points to be up there. But yeah, I think it's. Uh, it's exciting because you know it's uh, the levels are improving with a lot of clubs, a lot of new managers coming into it, a lot of players joining, some high-profile signings as well. So I think it's uh, it's an exciting ingredient for the for the new season. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Uh, we we'll go to Chris Brooks. Hi, Gareth. Just to, to ask you about Jess Park, was it always set for you? Um, I'll answer the second part first. Yes, there were teams that were keen to look at Jess, and the first part it was definitely she was always going to be a part of our plans here. I think the experience she had at Everton last season was priceless for her. I think she's done a lot in her career already as a young player. Uh, obviously, had inclusion in the squad in England squad this this. Um, Last camp was very close to making, barring a, a, a shoulder injury, was close to making the World Cup squad as well. So it's a, it's a talented player. Is, uh, as a player that has ability to play in a number of positions, I think uh, we're really excited to see how Jess is going to progress with us this season. But yeah, I think um, really happy to have her back with us. Just Mary Fowler said a positive World Cup. How many do you feel she is to play in a big role, a bigger role? Is there anything last season you were I think there's always been signs there with Mary that this is a top player, top talent, and I think that she needs and she's had obviously time to settle. You know, we signed her on a long contract and we knew that we probably weren't going to see the best of her straight away. We saw glimpses of it for sure. We saw that ability. I think nailing down probably where we saw her best in terms of, of how we play and, and where that would be on the pitch. Again, similar suggest that she has the ability to play in a number of positions but yeah really excited to see where Mary's game goes this this season I think having her back more recently with the with the group and Australia not having had a camp was really beneficial to her so I think she's she's playing uh, at high levels at the moment and what we're seeing in training and excited about what the season is going to bring for her.